Let's just bow our heads in prayer. Lord, I want to thank you for this opportunity again to speak to your people in these few moments that I have. I pray that as John said in his prayer earlier, that we will not leave this place the same way we came in. And that you would challenge us, but also that you would encourage us and fill our hearts with peace and love and the surety as we live in these uncertain times. Amen. Amen. I have to say that I, uh, you could say I have a little bit of a, an addiction so, Pastor Sweet, are you sure you want to tell us about that? Because I'm not going to tell you, you're not going to tell me your addiction. Well, sometimes the annoyance of my family, um, when I go home this evening, uh, the first thing that I generally do, even most evenings, is I put the telly on, but basically, there's three stations that I watch. Yes, my wife is uh, lip syncing now. As I, it's BBC News 24, Sky News, and Al Jazeera England. It's, a, it's basically all I watch. Ever wanted to know what's going on in the world? Keep it up and abreast of the times in which we live. Um, but I have to say that whilst, yes, I do like to keep abreast with current events and times and so on, sometimes it doesn't make good listening and good watching. Because it really does help me to realize that we definitely are living in uncertain times. Because as I go through what the headlines generally are, most of the time in recent weeks, what do you think is the most troubling concern in the world today? What would you say? Hmm? It's got the E word. Anybody want to hazard a guess? Economics. Economics, that's it, I heard it coming. The economy. People are fearful. What's going to happen to us? The economy. Some would lead us to believe that it is getting better. Some, depending on which side of the uh, political spectrum you're on, some would say, no, it's getting worse. People are still losing jobs, worried about their jobs, worried about their homes, whether they're going to lose them. Just in our pastoral prayer that Charles gave them, which you shared in your prayer requests, people are not sure where they're getting the money from to keep and feed their families. Yes, there's the economy. And then, of course, uh, whilst the sun is sh shining beautifully, what was it doing all last night? <laughs> Rain. Now, for, I was wondering, uh, on the 5199, the road that I travel from Leicester to Northampton, there are signs that are planted there warning of floods. There's been a couple of occasions when, especially one evening, as we were traveling home, we weren't sure if we were going to make it. Going through some flooded areas, hoping the car wouldn't come out in the middle of the floods. But of course, we think we got it bad, but what about those poor folk down in the southeast who have to evacuate their homes? don't know what's going to happen. 
but about their livelihoods also. We live in an uncertain time, and I don't need to em emphasize this to you because all you have to do is just read the newspaper, listen to the radio, yes, watch the TV. It may even be that you don't have to do any of those things, but just simply in your own home. There are challenges, uncertain times for your marriage, for your relationship with your children, uncertain times. So let me share with you from the story that we read in Genesis chapter 28 verses 10 to 22 where I believe God shares with us some nuggets of how we are able to live with smiles on our faces on these uncertain times. You see, the background of Genesis chapter 28, 20 to 20, uh, 10 to 22, where Jacob had travelled about 70 miles not, you know, 70 miles in a car these days. You travel at 70 miles an hour, you do that in an hour. But not back in those days. 70 miles would take quite some time. But he traveled 70 miles on his 400 mile journey. Have mercy. A 400 mile journey to Haran. And as we read, he needed to rest for the evening, understandably. And he set up camp in, well, we don't know, because it tells us that it was a certain place. A certain place. Verse 11. Well, in that certain place, which obviously was not particularly noteworthy, nothing significant about it, there was nothing particularly holy about this place, it was just a place of dirt and stones, Jacob really had no reason to expect anything unusual. And so, soon after falling asleep with his head on a rock. How many of you here have ever used a rock as a pillow? Well, I don't know what I'm putting my hand up. You have, Morris. All right, did you get a really comfortable night? Yes. You did? <laughs> my, you must have a soft head. <laughs> and I mean that in the nicest possible way. must <laughs> have uh -huh. Oh, Master Guy now. Okay. Well, I've slept with some pillows that feel like rocks. <laughs> and I have to confess, I didn't get a good night's sleep at all. But you know something that was common back in those days, believe it or not. Common practice in ancient times. But that's not so much the importance of this story. But the fact that God came to Jacob in a dream. And in the dream, as we read for our scripture lesson, Jacob saw a stairway going from earth up to heaven. And, and there was, on this stairway, much taking place, much activity, because between the two realms, the story tells us that going up and down the ladder were what? Angels. Jacob stood under the stairway. And who stood at the top? The Lord. Yahweh was at the top. 
Now, what was the main point of the dream, you ask? Well, the main point of the dream was to affirm to Jacob first that what? That the Lord and his angels were one present and two active. Present and active, even, even when we are unaware of his presence. You know, I discovered in my Christian experience, I don't know about you, that you know, God shows up in unexpected places and unexpected, uh, unexpected times. Have I got a witness? And in Genesis 28, verses 30 to 15, the Lord speaks to Jacob. And it's from that speech that I believe there we can learn four nuggets before I finish. Four nuggets to remember as we live, you and I, in these uncertain times. So, number one nugget, verse 13. I'm going to invite someone to read it in a loud preacher's voice for us. Verse 13 of Genesis chapter 28. Who would read that passage for us? And behold, the Lord stood above him and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, my father, and the God of Isaac, and the land whereon thou dwellest. To thee will I give it, and to thy thy seed. Thank you, Rich. What was. What can you focus on in that passage? What, towards the end of that passage, what did God say to Jacob? Was God going to give him something? Yes. yes. He was going to give him the land which he lies on. So, what was God doing at that time? What was he... Was he making something? He made a promise. A promise. The first thing that God did was to remind Jacob of not just a promise, but promises. Friends, in uncertain times, we are to remember God's promises. Someone should say that. Amen. God's promises. The principle is true, not just, of course, for Jacob, but for all of us sitting here today and the hearing of my voice. And so, when we face difficult situations, which we have done, will continue to do so, in these uncertain times, we need to do something. Yes, remember God's promises. But where do we find those promises? Why, of course, in His Word. So that means to find those promises, You've got to open his word and read them. These uncertain times, we need to, as we open our Bibles, let the Holy Spirit remind us of what God has promised. You know, there are, this book is so full of promises for us. One of my favourite prom promises, uh, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19. Does anyone know what that promise tells us? What does it tell us there? It tells me, it tells you, that God has promised to supply all my needs. Sometimes the way we carry on, I wonder if we really believe that promise. I remember my father, bless his heart, whenever the gas bill or the electricity bill came, he would grumble, he would know where am I going to find money from to pay this bill with. Well, when I got to an age where I could 
<laughs> talk to my father. You know, back in those days, you spoke only when you were spoken to. But one day, I got brave enough, and I said, Dad, you know, every time the bill comes in, the bill's coming, you can play where you're going to get to. But Dad, have you ever not paid a bill? And he said, well, no. So I said, well, Dad, why go through the ritual of complaining? I questioned whether Dad realized that that promise, my God, our God, will supply our every need. Do we really, in these uncertain times, remember God's promises? The book, The Faith I Live By, page 23, Ellen G. White makes this statement. She says, every promise in God's word is ours. Now, you didn't hear what I just read. Did you? Let me read it again. She says, every promise in God's word is ours. Amen. Amen, indeed. When assailed by temptation, she continues, look not to circumstances or to the weakness of self, but to the power of the word. All its strength is yours. Amen. 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 And in certain times, one, God reminds us in the story of Jacob, remember his promises. Secondly, secondly, verse 15 tells us something very important to us. And who would like to read that passage like Reggie, the preacher's voice for us as we go to our second nugget? Verse 15. What does God say very clearly in that passage? Who would read it for us? Verse 15. Genesis 10, 28. Mm-hmm. What, what did he say to Jacob? Behold, I am what? I am with you. I am with you. The second nugget, brethren, is at uncertain times, remember God's presence. Remember his presence. Now, I know that sometimes it doesn't feel like his presence. Sometimes he feels, yes, far away, especially when we're right in the middle of of a horrible situation and time. But you know something, brethren, if we are to face the future with confidence, we must remember that God is with us. Jacob, he needed to know this also. God said to him very clearly, I am with you. Jacob, I believe he may have felt alone, but he was never alone and neither are we. God is always with us. Whether we feel it or not, He is with us. We leave Him, He doesn't leave us. Unless we force Him away. And He cannot do anything for us. Remember His presence in uncertain times. It has been a source of encouragement for all his saints. How do I know that? You read Psalm 23. David, that is a psalm known by millions, loved by millions. Uh, David was sure of God's presence. And then, of course, uh, in Matthew 28, where, yes, his presence is highlighted with his people. So, in these uncertain times, nugget one, remember God's promises. Nugget two, remember God's presence. Nugget three, nugget three, what ends in the section you read in verse 15, it also highlights not only is God present, 
But he says, I am with you and he will do something else. He will watch. That's right. He will watch over you. In other words, he will keep you. In other words, I'm going to protect you on this perilous journey. Now this did not mean that, of course, nothing hurtful is going to happen to you. Doesn't mean that your bad things are, are never going to happen to you. Oh no. But it did mean, just as it means to us, that God will protect us so that his plan, which is good, comes to its fruition. Amen. Jacob did not have to worry about his brother's anger. About the bandits, or about the wild animals as he travelled this journey. Why? Because he trusted that God would protect him. And in the same way, friends, we do not need to fear the dangers which assail us. No. We face many dangers in the world today. Again, as I watch the news, I see that around us there are terrorists, there are diseases, there's crime. Yes, and I mentioned financial loss, natural disasters happening all around us. But God has promised to watch over us. And I have to say that's certainly enough for me. What about you? In these uncertain times, we need to recognize God's promises. We need to recognize His presence. We need to recognize His protection. And the fourth final nugget that is highlighted is in verse 15, the promise in verse 15, where He says, yes, I promise to, to watch over you. It also had and has a dual meaning. The Hebrew word for watch meant to protect and in protecting it also carries the significance to provide for or to take care of the Hebrew word is actually first used in Genesis chapter 2 verse 15 when God instructed Adam to take care of the garden. To take care of the garden. I.e. to, yes, provide, if you like, for the garden's needs. And in the story of Jacob, God was promising, friends, promising to provide for his needs, as well as to protect him. Protect him from harm. Jacob clearly understood this because he expected God, yes, to watch over him on his journey, and yes, as we read in later passages, to uh, verse 20 particularly, to provide food and clothing, yes, for him. Friends, God has promised to provide for all the needs of his people. Notice he has promised to provide our needs, not our wants. I want a BMW to drive around in. God says, no, Pastor, you need a car, I'll give you a Nissan Note and make do with that. And I'm grateful for the Nissan Note. Amen. Wouldn't mind driving around the BMW, but I'm happy with what God has said. He will supply my every need. 
Jesus reminds us that the Father knows what we need just as he provides us, as he provides, sorry, for the birds of the air, he will certainly provide for us. In the manuscript sermon talks, chapter 2, 3, 2, 9, 9, Ellen White reminds us, listen to this wonderful statement. All who keep the commandments in truth and integrity reveal to the world that they are under the rule of God and are dependent upon Him for their temporal and spiritual victories. Marvelous day. She goes on to say, with God's presence and favor, his people, I like this bit, his people are safe. They are safe. And she goes on to say that with God's presence and favor, yes, his people are safe, although, although they may suffer. Uh, persecution for the truth's sake his goodness and the riches of his grace are their protection and salvation Amen. Amen My dear brothers and sisters yes these are uncertain times yes these uncertain times our hearts may tremble for fear. Sometimes we feel that we may be overwhelmed by what's going on around us. But I have to say to you that God's promise, that God's, I should say promises, that God's presence that God's protection and God's provision is there for each and every one of us. And I hope and pray for you and for me that as we leave this place, that each of us will face these uncertain times that through Jacob's experience, we can be encouraged because God, friends, is with us and God is for us. Amen.